In the autumn of 1621, a group of English pilgrims in Plymouth, Massachusetts shared a feast with the Wampanoag Indians in an event recognized as the first Thanksgiving. This wasn't a simple voyage across the Atlantic. These pilgrims, fleeing religious persecution in their homeland, embarked on a perilous journey to the New World aboard a ship called the Mayflower. The journey was fraught with danger and hardship, but hope and determination guided them to the shores of what is now known as Massachusetts. Life in the New World was far from easy. The pilgrims had landed in winter and were ill-prepared for the harsh conditions. Many fell ill and did not live to see the spring. Those who survived struggled to cultivate the unfamiliar land, but their perseverance saw them through. Their fortune took a turn when they formed an alliance with the local Wampanoag Indians. Among them was Squanto, a man who had been kidnapped by an English sea captain and sold into slavery before escaping to London. He had managed to return to his homeland only to find his tribe wiped out by an epidemic. Squanto, familiar with the English language and customs, played a crucial role in the survival of the pilgrims. He taught them how to fish, cultivate corn, and extract sap from maple trees. He also helped them forge a formal agreement with the Wampanoag leader, Massasoit, ensuring peace between the two groups. Their hard work paid off. By the autumn of 1621, the pilgrims had reaped a successful harvest. To celebrate, a three-day feast was held, attended by both the pilgrims and the Wampanoag Indians. This feast, filled with wild turkey, venison, fish and harvest vegetables, is often recognized as the first Thanksgiving. While these events laid the foundation for the holiday, the controversy of what truly counts as the first Thanksgiving still persists. In the following scenes, we'll delve into this controversy, explore how the holiday has evolved over the centuries and what it means to us today. The first Thanksgiving narrative is not without contention. Many other instances of communal thanksgiving predate the 1621 feast. When we dig deeper into the annals of history, we unearth other poignant moments of gratitude that could arguably be the first thanksgiving. Take the Spanish explorers, for instance. In the year 1565, more than half a century before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, a band of Spanish explorers led by Pedro Menendez de Aviles held a feast of thanksgiving in St. Augustine, Florida. They gathered together, broke bread with the native Siloy tribe, and expressed their gratitude for a safe voyage across the treacherous Atlantic. This event, some argue, should hold the title of the first thanksgiving. Then, let's journey to the year 1610, to the shores of Jamestown, Virginia. After enduring a brutal winter known as the Starving Time, the English settlers held a Thanksgiving service when supply ships arrived, bringing much-needed provisions. The settlers, relieved and thankful for their survival and the arrival of aid, held a service to give thanks. This too is a contender for the title of the first Thanksgiving. Historians debate these instances and others in a lively discourse about which event should be recognized as the first Thanksgiving the Spanish feast in Florida, the English service in Virginia, or the well-known feast between the pilgrims and the Wampanoag in 1621. Each event, with its unique narrative of struggle, survival and gratitude, has a rightful claim to the title. However, the first Thanksgiving is not just about being first, it's about the spirit of gratitude, unity and the shared human instinct to celebrate survival and abundance. Regardless of the debate, the 1621 feast remains etched in American consciousness as the first Thanksgiving. Its story, embellished and mythologized through the centuries, shapes our understanding of this beloved holiday, casting a long shadow that reaches into our modern celebrations. Fast forward to the 21st century, Thanksgiving has transformed into a holiday marked by parades, football games, and family feasts. Today's Thanksgiving bears little resemblance to the humble feast shared between the pilgrims and the Wampanoag back in 1621. The simple meal of venison and fowl has given way to a lavish spread of turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce and pumpkin pie. A day of thanks and prayer has morphed into a four-day weekend, a start of the holiday shopping season, and a chance to watch the National Football League in action. Let's talk about the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, an iconic holiday tradition. The parade, 
a spectacle of oversized balloons, floats, marching bands and Broadway performances, ushers in the holiday season with a sense of wonder and anticipation. In contrast, the first Thanksgiving was a quiet, solemn affair, with neither the pomp nor the fanfare we associate with the holiday today. Moving on to the gridiron, Thanksgiving Day is synonymous with football. The NFL has been hosting Thanksgiving Day games since its inception in 1920. This tradition of watching football with family and friends has become as ingrained in the holiday as the turkey itself. Yet in 1621, the concept of a competitive sport as entertainment would have been utterly foreign to the pilgrims and the Wampanoag. Then there's the annual presidential turkey pardon, a quirky tradition where the sitting US president spares the life of a turkey, symbolically granting it a reprieve from the Thanksgiving table. This modern custom, dating back to President Truman in 1947, is a stark contrast to the survivalist ethos of the first Thanksgiving, where hunting and gathering were necessities, not choices. So, as we dig into our turkey and cranberry sauce, watch the Macy's Parade, cheer on our favorite football team, or chuckle at the turkey pardon. Let's remember the journey Thanksgiving has taken. From the simple act of sharing a meal and expressing gratitude to the grandeur of the parades and the spectacle of football games, Thanksgiving has indeed evolved. From a humble feast to grand parades, Thanksgiving has indeed come a long way. The centerpiece of any Thanksgiving celebration is undoubtedly the feast, with the turkey taking the spotlight. Crisp and golden brown, its mouth-watering aroma wafting through the room, the turkey is a symbol of the bounty and prosperity we celebrate on this day. Accompanying the turkey is an array of traditional dishes, each with its own story woven into the fabric of American history. Stuffing, a medley of bread cubes, vegetables and seasonings, is often cooked inside the turkey, soaking up its flavors. Its origins trace back to the Roman Empire, but it's become an integral part of our Thanksgiving tradition. Cranberry sauce, with its tart sweetness, cuts through the richness of the meal, a vibrant ruby-red reminder of the wild cranberries that likely graced the first Thanksgiving table. And of course, no Thanksgiving feast would be complete without pumpkin pie. This creamy spice dessert is a testament to the ingenuity of early American cooks who transformed a humble native vegetable into a beloved sweet treat. Yet, if we journey back to the first Thanksgiving in 1621, we'd find a feast quite different from the one we're familiar with today. There, the Wampanoag people and the pilgrims likely dined on venison, provided by the Native Americans, along with wildfowl, which may have included turkey, but also ducks and geese. Corn, a staple crop for the Wampanoag, was likely served, but not in the sweet, buttery form we're accustomed to. Rather, it was probably ground into meal and used to make cornbread or porridge. Shellfish and fish, plentiful in the region, would have also featured prominently. Over the years, our Thanksgiving menu has evolved, shaped by cultural shifts, regional influences and personal family traditions. Yet, the spirit of the feast remains unchanged. It's a time to gather, to share, to indulge and to give thanks for the bounty before us. It's a moment to pause, appreciate and celebrate the rich tapestry of our shared history and experiences. Despite the evolution of the Thanksgiving feast, its purpose of bringing people together remains the same. Amidst the parades and feasts, the essence of Thanksgiving lies in its name, giving thanks. Now let's pause our historical journey and reflect a little deeper on this theme of gratitude. Thanksgiving is not just about the turkey or the parades, it's about acknowledging the goodness in our lives. It's about taking a moment to express our appreciation for the bounty we enjoy, for the roof over our heads, for the food on our tables, and for the love of our family and friends. Let's travel back in time to the first Thanksgiving. Imagine the pilgrims having survived a harrowing journey across the Atlantic, facing an unknown land, harsh winters and countless hardships. And yet, they found reasons to be thankful. They celebrated their first successful harvest, not focusing on the hardships they had endured, but choosing to acknowledge the fruits of their labor and the kindness of the native people who had helped them survive. This is the spirit that defines Thanksgiving, the ability to express gratitude, even in the face of adversity. It's about recognizing the silver linings, the small victories, the acts of kindness, and the joys that life offers us. 
It's about acknowledging that no matter how tough our journey may be, there's always something to be grateful for. In our modern times we may not face the same challenges as the pilgrims did, but we all have our own struggles, and just like the pilgrims, we too can choose to focus on the positive, on the blessings we have, instead of the things we lack. As we gather around the table this Thanksgiving, let's remember to express our gratitude for all that we have. Let's share our blessings with others and spread the joy of giving. Let's remember to be thankful, not just on this day, but every day of our lives. As we celebrate this holiday, let's remember to thank God for everything He has done for us throughout the last year. For without Him, we would have nothing. After all, we all have something to be thankful for, even if we don't realize it.